Now here's Flo Fox, uh, whose pictures uh, have been uh, getting very, very popular here in New York and all across the country. Uh, she is a photographer who I assume you've been taking pictures since you were little? It's been only for the last eight years. What got you interested in photography? I was interested ever since I was a child. Um, my parents died when I was young, and to me, the only way to hold on to anything through any type of memory was photographs. Do you have boxes and boxes of pictures yes. at home, albums? Uh, albums, no, boxes. Do you, do you look at them often? And the reason I ask that is I've taken thousands over my lifetime, as most people my age have. And somehow I never go back to them. It's not something that I th consciously think I of I go doing. back to them when I have a purpose, when mm -hmm. there's a show, when there's a title, when mm -hmm. there's a book, when there's a reason to look back at them. The obvious uh, point of interest with Flo Fox right now is the fact that she does not see as well as she used to, yet she is still a photographer. What happened that caused your eyesight to start to fail? I you, believe you know? it's connected with multiple sclerosis. I walk with a cane. I'm a little off balance. Um, first, my eyes went, and uh, later on, my legs got numb, and this hand is a bit numb. Mm -hmm. Yet you kept on, photo uh, kept on with your photography. How yeah. were you able to do it? At first, I took many out-of-focus pictures. We all do that, And yes. um, then came the autofocus cameras, which focus for you. Right. And that's what I use now. Right. What do you look for in a picture? What kinds of things do you like to photograph? Usually some type of ironic reality. Hardcore reality with a little twist, uh, something with a touch of humor. When you take pictures, how do you get them into the marketplace? Very difficultly. <laughs> but, but, but what is the process involved? Um, uh, those of us who do it as a... Uh, uh, you keep in touch with other photographers and, and you hear about different books coming out and what they're looking for. Um, I apply to have shows uh, and I bring my work around. What kinds of photographs do other people like to buy? One tends to think of connoisseurs of art, great paintings or original artwork, something like that. Uh, things but, that verge on pornography are probably the best sellers. It, now you've said it. Really and truly? <laughs> yes. Yes. Do you consciously look for that sort of thing, Pernod? Uh, that's just a natural ability that I've had all my life. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I used to get criticized as a child for drawing dirty pictures, but now I'm put on a pedestal for taking those types <laughs> of photographs. That's amazing, isn't it? Yes. Huh? yes. Are you shocked by uh, the desires of some people for pornographic pictures? Uh, I don't shoot just for pornography's sake. If I see something or know something's going on with a funny twist to it, I'll take the picture. Um, I don't know what you're going to show here today or what is allowed to be shown, but uh, dances, one called Dare If You, uh, Bear If You Dare. Uh, I don't think we'll be showing that one here, Flo. I know you won't. Um, <laughs> yes, I know. Can we take a look at some? We've got a ra not a raft, but we have a half a dozen here or so, and I've got the list over here. Let me get it out, and we'll take a look at some, yes. of, the, some of the pictures that Flo Fox has taken and the stories behind them. Uh, the first one is called uh, Old Friends, huh? Okay. All right. That's when uh, I had a decent eye, and uh, I could see the picture totally clear and took the photograph. It's at a cemetery in France of a statue of two old people, and uh, it fe I felt close to it. I had to photograph that. When you saw that, uh, uh, did you know the light was just right and the composition would be perfect and everything was going to be uh, My composition is all up to me, so yes, I knew that would be right. The lighting, um, you controlled yourself at that time, controlling the lighting and depth of field. The next one goes back to July of 76, and I think there's a personal story here. Uh, my notes say that you were going blind in the other eye, and it's called self-portrait. Yes, um, I took many at that time to try and prove my sanity. I was on a lot of heavy drugs from a doctor. I heard you just speaking about Thorazine. Mm -hmm. I was on Thorazine at the same time with Librium, Motrin, Ascriptin, Elevil, Prednisone. All at the same time? All at the same time, 32 pills a day because this doctor said if I didn't I would go totally blind. And I let him experiment with me for eight months. And uh, he was thrown out of the AMA. He's uh, not due to me. I don't know where he is now, but uh, I was his experiment. When you take 32 pills a day of those substances, what, what do you feel like? Well, the picture, I was trying to prove that I was still sane. I was still here. I mm -hmm. could still focus. I could function. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I, could, I had forgotten how to swallow. Um, it was the end of marriage, motherhood, and apple pie. It was a complete change of my life. But are you aware of life going on around you? Are you, are, are you 
in a different way. Cognizant is what they... I in a different way. I was on another plane. I couldn't relate to any human being. They were just mere earthlings, but I could predict the future, and I stopped everybody on the street to tell them their future, and many of the predictions came true. <laughs> I had phone calls from all over. All right. Uh, the next one is simply identified as man with cigarette girl sucking thumb. That one's called Everybody Sucks. That uh, has been made into a postcard. It's kind of a national lifestyle, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And obviously so. Now, where did you... Uh, this looks like you just saw some people passing by in a car. I was sitting in the car. Oh, okay. Okay. It was a man taking his daughter home. This is after I lost my eyesight. This is with autofocus, and I heard her saying, Daddy, Daddy, when are we getting home? So I knew exactly what was going on. How did you happen to be in the car with these people? Uh, they were driving me to their home um, with my son, oh. also in the back seat. Just want to make sure everything's above board here, Flo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> almost. We run morality tests on our people <laughs> and loyalty exams as well. I have to do commercials here. We'll continue to look at some more of the pictures of Flo Fox and talk more with this young woman from New York after this for the NBC television stations. With Flo Fox, so the convention here in New York, is that, uh, is that source material for you now? Are you, uh, I'm shooting crowds. Um... We're trying to avoid it, actually. You're, you're not haunting Madison Square Garden? Not at all. Oh. Okay. The next one is 59th Street Bridge in a puddle. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, a friend of mine pulled into a gas station. and, and Look at this. As I took, fantastic. As I took a little walk out of the car, that was the first thing I saw without looking out. I saw the bridge in the puddle, the reflection. I'm told it's very colorful by the gas stains, the pink and the green. Mm -hmm. I'm colorblind on those colors, though, but uh, I still love it. Next one is Slap Me Five. Oh, yeah. A uh, bunch of teenagers standing outside uh, greeting each other. I was listening to all their double talk or their own jive talk that they understand, and I mm -hmm. photographed it. When you started losing your eyesight, did you get mad? Did you get angry? Oh, yeah. Okay. I hibernated for two years. Feel sorry for yourself? Why oh, me? That yes. sort of thing? Yes. Have you worked that through? Not that it's any of my business. I don't, uh, don't want to be a psychiatrist here, Flo. You know what I mean? What I see is a very pretty way of seeing. I miss all of the gory details. Nobody has pimples or acne. Everybody is absolutely flawless. Yes, I accept it. It's difficult to read a street sign. Um, but I ask. Um, when I stayed home, when I was depressed, I put together a book, which now I brought to a publisher and is a possibility of it getting published. And you have a show in London, I read? That'll be coming up in June. I have one coming up in Paris and possibly Venice. When you prepare a show, how many photographs have to be a part of that? Oh, I'll probably do... I'll print about 50 of the major ones. I have this lights autofocus enlarger. Any place you put it, it focuses automatically. <laughs> You've got everything on auto, huh? It's wonderful. <laughs> And um, I'll select from the major ones that I choose. As but now, finals. the purists would say, and I have one of these cameras too because I'm as bad as you are when it comes to focusing, believe me. They will say, well, you cannot put the different lenses on here, the telephoto, etc., etc., etc. I cannot see really what's happening across the street anyhow, so I wouldn't be taking that picture unless it's a major fire or uh, something where I know the excitement that's mm -hmm. going on. But uh, it's a a quick way of shooting. The automatic focusing is you just pop it out and snap. Uh, there is no thinking. Just frame it right. What about the uh, uh, the instant camera, the sonar? The uh, uh, I shoot with that also. The Polaroid right, sonar. Right. Yeah, that I mainly use for the close-up. Just somebody's eyes, just someone's lips, mm -hmm. just someone's parts you don't talk about on TV. Oh, you make those too, huh? Oh, yeah. All right, here's one called the Bowery. Mm -hmm. next, uh, next one. Uh, that uh, friend of mine was going to the bank on the Bowery, and uh, he said, oh, there's a Flo Fox shot, and he turned the car around, did a U-turn. I pointed the camera and shot and was sorry that I couldn't be closer to concentrate on the three bums or men lying on the street, but I didn't know at that time until I blew it up that it said, wines, buy, and that made it more exciting. Uh, one of her friends rolling a joint while an old lady looks on in shock. Flo, you're a very progressive person, I must say. Well, she wasn't an old lady. She's a wonderful elderly lady who... Uh, I actually have a series of where the woman is looking at her and then looking shocked, and then the two of them are chatting mm -hmm. afterwards. Did the elderly woman uh, decide to join your friend in this little uh, unlawful activity? She didn't activity? Uh, smoke. Is it still unlawful? Well, I, I don't know. Okay. Some parts of the country it is, so... Okay. But she didn't join your friend in that after. No, but she sat around and accepted it. Now, one of the things that you've done is you've done some teaching 
And the next two photographs were taken by uh, your students. The first one, I believe, is by a young man named John Martello. Uh, that was a self-portrait. I was teaching at the Lighthouse for the Blind, and Martello, um, well, when I first loaned him a camera, he said, can I borrow it this week, Miss Fox? Oh, thank you. And I said, no, 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 that's the ashtray. And I said, oh, my God, there goes my camera. <laughs> But uh, the first, that was his first photograph he took, the self-portrait in the mirror, just to see if the camera worked. Mm -hmm. And I love it. Mm -hmm. He looks a little frightened by it all there. Um, he keeps his or eyes surprised. always surprised. wide. That's the way he looks. Are there many people who are visually handicapped now who have become interested in photography uh, because of I your efforts, possibly, and by the development of the autofocus camera. Yes, I keep getting a lot of phone calls and fan mail since I've been written up in newspapers, and I respond to just about everyone telling them how I shoot and possibly where I'll be teaching again in the fall. Oh, you mean you won't be teaching at the Lighthouse in the fall? Uh, I don't think so. I think I'm a little too outspoken, maybe. In what way? Uh, I shouldn't even mention their name unless I get their permission first, so we just did an illegal thing here right now. Oh, I think you can mention Lighthouse on They the don't like to be mentioned unless I get full permission ahead of time. Oh, well, they're, out, they're out of luck bureaucratic tonight. bureaucratic, and I have a difficult time handling that. Okay. In other words, you and that organization had a parting of the ways. It looks that way. Okay. Uh, the last one is by Vince, uh, a totally non-sighted student. Yes. Um, I have pictures of Vince with his glass eye in his hand, actually, with just the socket that I use the Polaroid for. Mm -hmm. uh, the picture that he took was with an autofocus camera. Um, probably, yes, it was the Canon autofocus, the one mm -hmm. that I shoot with. He wanted to know if there were trees outside his bedroom window. And so he took shots all along uh, the way to the lighthouse and just covering his lifestyle and ask us who have partial eyesight who is it mm -hmm. what does that chick look like behind the bar um, <laughs> anything he wants to know okay before you run away would you take my picture with your camera oh i would love to is this light okay for it or you need the uh, light flashed it will adapt okay. i use the lighting only in case you have a shadow a heavy shadow anywhere this will adapt and okay. remove it okay Oh, oh yeah. I like, uh, you have like a mural there. We'll do kind it that mural, way. Oh, yeah. I don't like Thank flashbacks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Continued success. God bless and thanks Thank for being so with much. us tonight, Ms. Flo Fox. We will continue and talk about, uh, you may want to stick around for this, how to draw up a contract if you're living together, right after these announcements from our sponsors oh and the God. NBC Television Network. Then again, you may not want to. All right.